Paul's house. This will bring out the ghosts. Yes, that's like some of his film crew job. Mm. He'd be joking. Oh, it's obviously an attorney mm. day. It's tremendous, isn't it? Yeah. Quite accurate, too. Look at the little curtains on. Not too bad at all. Kitchen's missing, right? Yeah, out of the city. It's got shingles on the roof, right? Look, I'm bringing it across. Try it on top of that first. Not too bad at all. It doesn't matter if it's wet. I'm afraid it's locking up. Okay. So, if I drive down, uh, can you pick it up? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. It's incredible. Considering that... Should we treat the script like the historians do the house? You can go back in time, as we were talking about before. Okay, stand by. Okay, girls. Last bit for you this morning. A4, take one. Nobody's looking. Come see it. It's quiet. I'm not even meant to talk to you. Auntie says we'll have to rule the line somewhere. And so, at last, after everyone else, the daughters of the washerwoman did see the doll's house. And it had such an air of possibility, of real life held inside, that you knew how God must feel in the dead of night with real houses and real people. How small the world must look, waiting to begin. but don't disturb anything in here, will you?
some value. Although you do know my opinion that the pleasure is the greater good to be got from bathing. Uh, so you will come back refreshed and invigorated, even if the cure has not been effected. I am pleased that Sophia is beginning to work up her Schubert again. Uh, those light pieces of hers are all very well, uh, but do not give the satisfaction of the rich treasures. Amy says that you would like my cure for seasickness, and it is this. Uh, 16 drams of bromide of sodium dissolved in 16 tablespoons full of water. Uh, one tablespoonful is to be taken three times a day for three days before sailing. A tablespoon seems too large a dose for children. Uh, no, he says um, for the children it would be necessary only to take one teaspoonful instead of the larger amount. Uh, my return to Auckland will be soon after your own and then we will have it out about our gentleman scientists. But now I must leave this and attend to your mother-in-law as she is impatient to be gone. Yours affectionately, Don John Davis. I wonder how much bromide I'd leave. That's three tablespoons, three days. That's nine tablespoons to each person. Two now, what is it to be then, Sophia? The bromide or your fresh air and exercise? The new cure or uh, nature left to herself? father must have trusted him. Well, I think the general's attitude was very much a 19th century attitude toward land. He was fortunate he could provide capital for his sons to buy land. All these other people who were here didn't have as much capital or perhaps uh, didn't understand as clearly as he did that this was the basis of society in 19th century land. So one man, if he had a bit of capital, would buy three or four of these farms and amalgamate them. Auckland, were in, in the time prior to this house being built and about that time would have been a fairly desolate place really by our present standards. It's not lovely New Zealand bush. The advertisement was put in the paper in England which said that maids wanting to come to New Zealand there were great matrimonial chances. <laughs> 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 The, the men were chasing women all over the place. I think an awful time, really, because there weren't enough women to begin with. And also, but then on top of that, women kept dying and they had babies. So that you didn't just have the bachelors wanting uh, wives. You had new widows. Widows. Good bachelors. Didn't Alan's brother marry the William's wife was, uh, was left a widow with a young child. Oh. And she had to find employment somewhere. She had no means to keep herself. 
And I don't think she's the least strange thing. No, I... Eventually, William married her. Just because she was a housekeeper doesn't yes. mean that she was necessarily of not her standing, because women came here, they had to do things. Everyone in New Zealand in the early days had to do things to which they weren't accustomed. Yeah, quite. Yeah. And, and especially yeah. in Auckland. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, there was nothing there. The, no, there was... There was nothing to look at from here to Carver yeah. Pass. Oh, well, all over that way uh, was Cabbage Tree Swamp, where Eden Park and Sandringham are now. But all through this swamp land there were pockets of good volcanic soil, and the Hakaranga Hunt meeting here would find its way through the swamp. So some of the uh, water was quite deep, and people drowned there at odd times. Oh, back now, you, we fillies, you. <laughs> now, you stick to the path. You lose your way. It's slippery down there and it gets a lot worse. <laughs> you then finish up down the bottom there. It's a hard climb back up again. And with the fine prospects you've got with us, you should no be acting a bee. Now back up to the house and find yourself some work. Off you go now. And you stay to the path. Well, of course, he was a very keen horseman, and he used to ride with the Pakaranga Hunt. Oh, well, that does interest me. It sounds marvellous. Mm. I, I've seen Royal Irish um, sketchbooks, crowds of race meeting kind of sketches. And, um, notice the saying, please do not jump over the fence, come through <laughs> the gates. <laughs> Presumably they were going to pay at the gates. There were wonderful notices. Especially mm. a race for Maoris, and they said that the uh, contestants must wear trousers. And Lady Martin was asked by her husband just not to let in Maoris without trousers. Oh, well, fair enough, I suppose, in those days. I can imagine him coming over here, mm. and um, an earnest young woman. Yes, young? very studious. Um, well, you just need to judge from the books round about. He was... Um, um, he was a Greek scholar, Latin scholar. Mind you, his wife was the same. Oh, really? Yes. And he was so young, too. Yes. Oh, yes. And what's more, he brought his own family up, even the girls, to learn Greek, Oh, did Latin, he really? Italian. Oh, that, that's amazing. No, I didn't know that at all. So her father was a terrific scholar, and possibly this was why he had met his wife. His oh, that does interest me. Oh, I can Civilization is not the work of 20, nor yet 40 years. Though anxious for a Christian teacher to live among them, the natives are so attached to their evil customs that honesty, truth, and industry remain sadly unenlightened. Ago, a person scarcely dared lay down a tool for fear of its theft. Now locks and belts have a little use. Ah. Ah. B. B. Après six semaines d'occupation de cette petite colonie, J'ai la satisfaction de Prêchant voir... la parole divine avant que les missionnaires protestants les dénaturent en répandant des calomnies. For his cross, gradually changing the red of the blanket to a crisp and glittering white. In any new it's land, easy. it is best to remember the capitalist lesson. To possess one acre that energy and intellect has raised to value is better by far than having hundreds which, from the deficiency of population and markets, are comparatively useless. Rumours that a gentleman recently arrived from England intended purchasing large tracts. I will tell you more further rumours that this gentleman is dissatisfied and does not intend investing money in Canada. It is my belief, sir, that this estimate is fully one-third in excess of what actual receipts are likely to be. <laughs> Unless providence, on which alone the government seems to rely, and on which our credit has for some time rested, intervenes specially in its favour. <laughs> It is evident 
the supply of farmland is inadequate to the demand of this settlement, the government having none to offer. However deeply interested, settlers are prohibited by law from entering into any purchase from private parties. Yet there is much reason to fear that unless His Excellency provides the necessary powers at the moment when the natives are willing to sell, opportunities may be lost which may not reoccur. In March last, a valuable block of land was offered by a whiter chief despite the determined opposition of others there who state they will not allow it, although he has the right to sell. This being no less than assuming sovereignty, the government accepted the offer. And on Monday last, the surveyors arrived. On laying down their chains, they were obstructed by a parcel of old Maori women sent by W. Kingi and his party. Mr. Carrington being prevented from using his theodolite by their embraces. All along we have been victims of the government's temporizing policy, so this contempt for our authority and power has determined the settlers to volunteer to bring Kingy's rebellious tribe to reason. God defend the right. <laughs> Before we're through, with them all, you and I, Alec, has to be done.
good. Ah, fine to see you, Russell. Come in, come in from the cool evening. Brisk for your ride, was it? It was. I was held up for three hours by that London bank. But, <laughs> Mrs. Taylor, my deepest apologies. To be late for a ball at all, but it is as much a disservice to myself as it is to such an indulgent host. Oh, we're very pleased to welcome you, Mr. Russell. You'll take a warm glass by the fire. Oh. And then perhaps find those carefully reserved blanks on the ladies' dance program. <laughs> come in. state of the market, as you well know, Russell. <laughs> I men need more than we butts to satisfy them. All expecting pure charity, with rights too. Better let the sheep work for you, know where you are. Oh, and watch them starve. Well, there's no good land out there, <laughs> unless you're a high-flying butt. <laughs> Aren't we all just now? We made to rise by greedy little beaters. But we are cheerful with them. <laughs> I can understand how Miss Allen Kerr Taylor felt about her financial troubles because the letters coming from London speak of the people there mm. as having aged and, mm. and being frantic with worry. Yes. You see, Allen Kerr Taylor was able, like so many New Zealand colonists, to use the security of his land to borrow heavily from British investors. Land unseen. That's right. He held shares in timber companies, the Bank of New Zealand, the New Zealand Loan and Mercantile Agency, mm -hmm. the New Zealand Insurance mm -hmm. Company. And some of the money for this investment would have come from gold, wouldn't it? Oh, yes. Auckland, like Dunedin, was a pretty important financial okay. centre in the last century. And this meant that considerable power fell into the hands of a small group of men who were controlling the affairs of the Bank of New Zealand and other companies. They were a financial elite, and Alan Kerr Taylor and the Taylor family were members of that. And of course, this elite soon ran into difficulty. Yes. If you held heavily in shares, you were in trouble once the Depression came. In one company with worldwide shareholding, the Taylor family held three times as many shares as any other single person or family. And this meant that when the company was in the course of reconstruction in the early 1890s, they were exposed to the possibility of a call of £80,000, mm. a very considerable sum of money at that time. And of course, this is the situation poor Sophia was left to deal with after Alan's death in 1890. Uh, it's an interesting point, of course, that Alan died in this very room, sitting in a chair beside the fireplace. He had a sudden heart attack and actually died in this room.
Dear Mr. Stackpool, the whole family is delighted to accept your invitation to view Alberton, though there's not much we farmers can suggest beyond the memories our aunts passed on after Grandma died. They ignored the past, really, and in school holidays, when we came from Weimark, the house became a giant playroom, for them as well as us. The girls, everyone called them, they were always lively. Aunt Muriel played golf until she died and did press-ups for exercise. It always was a bit old and musty. It used to yeah. give us the creeps, really, because yeah. I think because the fact that the children were all born here and had a, an air of uh, mystique about it, really. We yeah. never came in yeah. here, or very rarely. Yeah. If we did, it was just to peep from the little door there. And this was just an understood thing. The children didn't come into this room. They weren't deliberately kept out of it. They oh, just no. They didn't come into it. We were never deliberately yeah. kept out of any yeah. room, really, yeah. but uh, yeah. we seemed to know. Yeah. But, um, this cabinet, of course, was always here, but and I think you were used to keep all the jewelry, oh, yes. that sort of thing. But um, no, I, I have um, I've never really seen these before. Yes, well, they're, they're Indian, of course, aren't they? And I wonder if they came out with the family in any way, or you know, just gifts sometime from India. And, uh, I suppose it's changed quite a lot since you remember it. It's changed considerably. Yes. <laughs> One thing yeah. the um, Smell has almost uh, disappeared. Yes, well, must have yes and, you know, this is something that's quite indefinable, isn't it? And, and yet it's very important to a house. And yet the um, atmosphere of uh, India seems to have been maintained. You know, oh, that's good to... anyway. Very good. Glad to see you. Yes, because this is something, again, which there wasn't a great deal of here. So it really does um, concern me that uh, it's not going to be, you know, um, well, it's not going to be lived in. And no, how are you well, going to achieve this lived in look? Well, we've coped with this problem in a number of houses throughout the country, and I, I think we can do it all right. Mm -hmm. To get a feeling of naturalness in the house, as if it were lived in, even though it's not, it may be a bit artificial, but uh, when you're displaying things to the public, you've got to be a little bit artificial, really. Mm -hmm. Will they, um, the public be allowed to use the furniture to sit on? Sort of thing, well, right? only some. Some, mm. by no means all. Because this is what strikes me with um, stately homes I went through in Britain. And mm. People won't be living in it, and it's going to be hard to yes, yes. maintain. Yes, but I think we can do this. I, I think. Uh... Stand by. How dare you, Mandy? Get out, you girls, quickly! How dare you let them come here? Away they flew, across the lily lawn to the safety of the open road. As they gathered themselves for the walk home, the little one's eyes shone with wonder. 
I seed it, she said. I seed it all. I seed it all inside. And off they trudged as the shadows lengthened.